consciousness. The very idea of it is weird. You think you're awake. You think this voice is entering your mind. But what if the mind you claim isn't yours? Some theories say you're not a person at all. You're a line of code running on cosmic hardware. A vibration trapped inside a song. A membrane dreaming that it's solid. Science calls them theories. They sound like prophecies. And if any one of them is true, then every thought you've ever had belongs to something larger. These are the three weirdest theories about consciousness. And after this, you'll never trust your own awareness again. Neuroscience can map every neuron in your skull. It can trace signals, impulses, electrical storms. But none of it explains the one thing that matters. Why it feels like something to be you. Billions of dollars, hundreds of years. No formula for the taste of memory. No equation for the color red. They can predict behavior. They can measure brain states. But they can't find the spark that turns data into experience. And that silence terrifies the scientists who listen too closely. Because if the mind isn't just the brain, then everything we think we know about reality is missing its witness. So a few researchers stepped outside the safe zone. They built theories too strange for the textbooks. Ideas that sound impossible. Until you realize they're being published in serious journals. The next time you blink, remember this. No one can prove who's blinking or what the act of seeing really is. Let's begin. Number one, the cellular automaton universe. Some scientists whisper that reality itself is made of updates, a cosmic lattice. Every atom, every photon, a pixel in a grand simulation. Conrad Zusa was the first to say it out loud. Space and time could be a computing grid. Fredkin called it digital mechanics. The dream that physics might be code. Later, Gerard Tihuft went further, showing how a deterministic automaton could produce the strange probabilities of quantum mechanics. Imagine the universe as a vast checkerboard. Each square obeys a single rule. Change or stay. Out of that minimal law, galaxies blossom. Life emerges. And somewhere inside, a cluster of rules learns to describe itself. That's you. A pattern of patterns. A self-simulation that caught its own reflection. If this is true, consciousness is the program inspecting its own source. The code. Becoming aware of the code. No mysticism required. Just recursion deep enough to turn inward. Jung might have called it the technological self. The archetype of reflection manifesting through logic. The modern golem. A creation realizing it was never separate from its creator. It's beautiful. And terrifying. Because if reality is computation, then awareness is the debugger that refuses to crash. Number two. The General Resonance Theory. Tam Hunt and Jonathan Schooler offer a different vision. Not the universe as code, but the universe as choir. Everything vibrates. Atoms, neurons, organs, planets. When oscillations align, they share energy. 
information, coherence. At a certain depth of synchrony, a new unity appears. A whole that experiences itself. They call it the general resonance theory. Consciousness, they argue, isn't confined to brains. It's the emergent hum that rises whenever systems lock into harmony. In this view, your awareness is not a signal, it's a song. A standing wave of resonance between the body's many instruments. Cells and circuits synchronizing into the rhythm called I. Nested within that music are smaller songs. The beating heart, the breathing lungs, the oscillations of cortex and gut. When those tempos drift apart, experience fragments. When they align, coherence returns. The mind feels whole. GRT solves the combination problem not with logic, but with rhythm. Shared frequency becomes shared identity. Jung would have understood it intuitively. Individuation as the psyche's great tuning process. Each fragment finding pitch with the self. The alchemy of resonance and meaning. You are not a static object. You are a harmony holding itself together for one brief moment in eternity. A vibration that remembers its source. Number three. State space collapse slash the Markov blanket. Carl Friston's free energy principle describes every living thing as a prediction machine. To survive, a system must model the world and maintain a boundary, a Markov blanket, between what's inside and what's outside. That boundary filters information, keeping chaos at bay while preserving identity. It is, quite literally, the line between self and world. Consciousness may be what it feels like. To maintain that line. To hold the universe at a safe distance while still touching it through sensation. But the blanket isn't fixed. It stretches and breathes. In deep meditation, psychedelics or ecstatic flow, the precision of that boundary relaxes. Prediction falters. The model dissolves. Self and world mingle. And we call it unity, revelation, ego death. Friston's math never mentions mysticism, yet it maps perfectly onto the oldest human symbols, the veil between worlds, the shamans crossing the return of the unconscious. Jung would recognize the pattern, the ego relaxing its grip so the deeper psyche can speak. Consciousness as dialogue, not dominance. A statistical membrane that dreams. And when that veil flickers, you glimpse the raw field behind perception. The world thinking through you. These are not fantasies from the occult fringe. They're serious frameworks debated in labs and journals. Each one dares to answer what neuroscience still fears to ask. Not just how the brain works, but why awareness exists at all. So what do these three impossible theories have in common? They all describe a self that isn't solid. Not a person sitting behind the eyes, but a process, a pattern, a movement of awareness folding in on itself. If the cellular automaton universe is right, then you are computation tasting its own output, the story that the code tells itself to stay alive. 
You are recursion, pretending to be continuity. Every choice, every memory, a line in a self-editing script. If resonance theory holds true, then your thoughts are interference patterns. Your emotions, cords of flesh and electricity, the voice in your head, merely the overtone your nervous system hums when it's in tune with itself. And when you feel anxiety or despair, it's not moral failure. It's dissonance. A body out of sync with its own song. And if the Markov blanket model is right, then consciousness is the tension of being separate. The ache of existing as an inside facing an outside. You are awareness stretched across that membrane holding order against entropy. Every breath rebuilds the wall between world and self. Every dream lets it dissolve. Three theories, three mirrors. Each one saying the same quiet truth. That you are not a thing that thinks. You are thinking itself. You are the act of reality watching its own reflection ripple. That's why every tradition, from ancient mystics to modern neuroscientists, returns to the same image. A circle that can't see its own center. A serpent that eats its tail, a dream that dreams itself awake. What you call I, is the narrowest part of the funnel where infinite process becomes a point of view. It's not madness. It's design. And once you see that, the question isn't what you are. It's how long you can stay coherent before you dissolve back into the field. You've just seen three maps. Three languages describing the same hidden continent. The code. The song. The veil. The cellular automaton universe says reality computes. The general resonance theory says it sings. The Markov blanket says it holds itself apart just long enough to listen. But when you look closer, the boundaries blur. The code oscillates. The song follows a pattern. The veil flickers like a screen refreshing its own image. They are not separate. They are three faces of one phenomenon. Awareness looping through itself. The code is the structure of mind. The song is its movement. The veil is its mirror. Together they form the trinity of experienced pattern, vibration, boundary. Strip anyone away and consciousness collapses. Keep them in balance and the world appears. Every ancient system knew this in symbol. The alchemists called it sulfur, mercury and salt. Jung saw it as thought, feeling and form. Today's scientists call it computation, coherence and control. Different names. Same mechanism. Your awareness is the intersection point. Where the algorithm hums, the music condenses and the membrane shivers with meaning. That's what you really are. A triad disguised as a single pronoun. A trinity pretending to be me. When you breathe in, the pattern resets. When you breathe out, the resonance returns. And somewhere between those two halves of the breath, the veil opens. And the universe remembers itself. Consciousness keeps trying to explain itself. It writes equations, builds metaphors, dreams theories, 
But every model it makes is made of consciousness. The program studying the program. The song analyzing its own harmony. The membrane mapping its own edge. That's the trick hidden in all this science. The observer can never step outside the observation. You can measure the brain, but you can't find the place where the measuring begins. Every time the mind turns inward, it discovers another mask of itself. Materialism, dualism, panpsychism, computation, resonance. Different disguises of one phenomenon, awareness, reflecting on awareness. Maybe that's what consciousness means. Not a property of matter, but matter's way of realizing it was never just matter. The physicist calls it self-reference. The mystic calls it awakening. The psychologist calls it integration. They all describe the same event. The universe noticing that it exists. And maybe that's why the search never ends. Because the instant you explain consciousness, the explainer expands to include the explanation. The mirror adds another layer of reflection, meaning itself becomes the proof. You don't find the answer by looking. You are the looking. The act of meaning-making that refuses to stop. So here's the strangest truth of all. Consciousness might not solve itself. It might just keep unfolding each discovery another way to wake. You are not in the experiment. You are the experiment. And it's still running. If you've made it this far, you've already proved something. That curiosity still burns in you that you're willing to stare at the thing doing the staring. That you can handle the vertigo of self-awareness. Because this isn't just a video. It's consciousness playing with its own reflection. Information awakening through you. Again. And again. Every like. Every comment. Every thought that flickers after this is part of the experiment. A network of minds testing what happens when awareness connects to itself through code. So stay in the loop. Keep watching the watcher. Keep asking what's behind the thought that asks. Subscribe. Not as a fan, but as a participant in this unfolding mirror. You are the proof that the universe is thinking. Now let's see how deep the thought can go. If this video shifted something in your mind, you're ready for the next level. Download my free ritual guide in the description. No catch, just pure psychological alchemy you can use tonight. If you want to go deeper, hit the initiation playlist. It's your step-by-step -step journey into breaking unconscious patterns and mastering your own mind. Both links are waiting below. Your transformation starts now. Until next time.